group counter greater than or equal to group max count. Okay, first things first, I'm thinking I could remove this cap counter because it's the exact same, uh, it's doing the exact same thing as spawn counter and this check right here. And that also means I could remove the cap and remove this cap and the cap counter. I could remove both of those. try to do that. Uh, again, reducing code where possible. Uh, if I don't have to use it and I don't have to maintain it, it removes any complexity that, um, yeah, it removes any complexity that I have to maintain. Let's see if uh, we still have the same behavior as before. We should. the um, cap counter. Try this one more time. Go back. to remove this duplicate code or this um, it's not really duplicate code but it's um superfluous code so let's go ahead and get these guys out of here if we need to we'll bring it back at some point but for now I think we reduce the complexity of this code where possible now meat mode might fail let's make sure meat mode is in a good state
see a lot of duplicate code between the two stories um, or between the two modes, but I'm less concerned about that as I am just trying to make sure I'm not breaking something here. I do see that I can do the same thing here that I did story mode. This guy I'm going to remove all together. Yep, remove this. Okay, so a lot of that unnecessary complexity is gone. This right here is just setting these variables on the fly. Okay, I think I might know what to do to solve the problem where the groups aren't coming on screen at the same time. And I think that has to do with this guy right here. I think he should almost get incremented. He starts at one and we have a group counter of zero I think when the group counter gets incremented we could also increment the group max count so because this guy is one by default obviously my hand is not in the right place All right. remove that And I think we go here global dot enemy three group max count plus plus. Hmm. What happens if we The only problem is we need to decrement this. This is a difficult one. This 
is a difficult one. Because maybe I want to decrement it right here and increment it right here. Once that last guy gets on screen, decrement it unless we increment it right here. Try this wild code. Mission one, death at dusk, go! Hey -o. <laughs> Hmm, that was very cool. But not quite the intended effect. Comment that out. And I think I didn't address this. I need to go address this real quick. As I'm thinking about it, I just got to thinking about it, so give me a second. Line 27. Is that line 27? I don't think so. is when I destroy one of these this doesn't exist Technically, what's up, what's up, what's up? Got some great news. Tight, dude. Let me hear it. I think I could just set this as a... Um, Sorry guys, give me a second. I see that I'm having some sort of issue here. Ah, there, there it is. That freaking compile window just goes invisible sometimes. Alright, um... Final opener. I don't think I need to set this to a heli. I think we just set it to the create event. Let's just say... Final heli equals false. But 
so that should take care of that problem. I should never have that problem again. Let's verify that. Mission one, death. Well, I definitely didn't have that issue, but am I decrementing hella good counter when those things get destroyed? Okay, so I noticed when I killed the helicopter that the next part didn't um, continue. So, I think what I'll do is um, where's this hella good guy coming from? Gotta follow. Five dollars. Yo, man, thanks a lot, dude. Might get to travel to New York City, New York, sometime later this year or early next. As hopefully, if everything is going the way it's heading, I might be able to pitch my idea for a drama sitcom to Comedy Central thanks to some contacts in the U.S. I'd love some congratulations on getting this far. Heck yeah, dude. New York. 
Hopefully, if everything is going the way it's heading, I might be able to pitch my idea for our drama sitcom, Comedy Central, thanks to some contacts in the U.S. I'd love some congratulations. Yeah, man. Definite congrats are in order. And thanks for the donation, dude. Like, literally, that's our first donation. And I'm going to make that much bigger. Should definitely be way bigger. So I've got our first donation by CT. Like a boss. For sure, man. For sure. Thanks a lot, yo. That was tight. And... Dun, 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 dun. Now let's see if I can put in here donation. Give me one second, bro. Let's see what the best way to do this is real quick. Top apps, Twitch alerts. I'm gonna get that up, man. All right, give me one second here. I'm gonna pop that up. Got it, so give me just one second here. Five dollars, what? Dude, I'm so pumped about that, man. I think this will do it, so I'm going to try here. Pull it up here. One more piece that i got to add to this. Still working, give me one minute here.
think I have that. Total donation amount. Most recent donator. Top donator. Got to write 26 episodes for a season, including two live episodes in the middle. Set as block A, 12 episodes live, two episodes block B, 12 episodes. Holy crap, dude. Damn. Dude, you definitely deserve some congratulations on that, man. That's so good. Major props, yo. Thanks for sharing that with us. I think I've figured out what I need to figure out here. So I'm gonna I'm just slightly modifying this. better later. dude thanks again for the donation major congratulations live I mean two of the episodes are gonna be not pre-recorded they're gonna be totally live totally live is a risk because there can be mistakes for sure man for sure so is this what you do on a regular basis And uh, it sounds like you're writing all of these yourself. What's up, yo? Just 
got our first donation from CTXCB who just got some really good news that he's sharing with us. Totally new to me, like never wrote for TV before, done a few plays and stuff, nothing on the scale. It's awesome, man. Wow. It's pretty cool, dude. Alright, so uh, feel free to keep sharing. I'll keep reading. Uh, I'm just going to keep moving here, moving forward. So basically we're checking to make sure the last helicopter is off screen. Huh, that's cool the beastly bro. I guess you're not driving then. guy I checked out X so really if you destroy the last helicopter and he doesn't make it to So heli type is good by default. I'm wondering if I should make it bad. Two targets for the main cast members at the moment. Might drive for the first few hours. What does this show about? Tight. Okay, heli type equals good. Let's go bad here. Let's make sure we set the heli type right here. Heli good guy dot heli type equals um, good. And on the destroy event of this object, if heli type is equal to good, then heli good counter minus minus. Ooh. Okay, okay. That might be a little bit problematic here because the heli good counter. 
is in the enemy generator 2 so we're gonna ex we're gonna get it out of the enemy generator 2 sweet yeah likewise good luck to you man um, let's take this out of here. Maybe not. Yeah, man, for sure, dude. Hella good counter. I think we have everything in place for these to interact correctly. I should be able to destroy all the helicopters correctly. Mission one, death at dusk. Go! <laughs> they just keep generating, of course. Yeah, they're generating because in the step event here. <laughs> so I am decrementing properly. Let's see though, I'm having a problem. Hmm. The point of this is to make sure that at least six have been generated.
do do we have uh, forums? Because you're trying to um, communicate with us on the forums about some ideas, Sir Tao. Um, I'm trying to think of the best place to communicate with us. Let me see if I, um, so we don't have any. So to answer your question, we don't have any forums specifically set up for Sky Cursor in any. Um, ideas, but you can contact us or reach out to us at any time for anything. Uh, we take all contacts very seriously um, and, you know, use them for consideration of the game. Um, but right now we don't have anything set up for um, users to kind of interact with each other. Ah. Um. We can we can set up forums, Sir Tao. We're pretty uh, we're fairly web savvy, so um, I don't think we're looking for anybody to do that right now. But thanks for the offer, man. Appreciate it. I don't necessarily think we need one right now. Oh sweet dude. I'll check I'll check it out. I've seen their um, their game, Death's Gambit. They got a pretty sweet game going on. I'll check out the forum man. Paste the link. I'm down. Cool, so you're using V-Bulletin. Alright. Looks good, man. Yeah, I'll take this and run this by the guys and see if they want something like this. Again, I'm not sure if we need to. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see it's customized for sure. Looks good. Looks really good, man. Obviously, it's been customized. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll see if the guys are interested in it, and uh, we'll have a conversation about it. Do you have a fee, or do you have a, a rate? Okay, additionally, just gotta follow. Sir Tao, thank you for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Also, you have just been accepted into the Griffin Aerotech School of Aviation. Thanks for the follow. -up. Awesome, dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to these guys and see if uh, that's something they're interested in. It's great, dude. Yeah, let's stay in touch, though. Come back and talk to me. I'll make sure I talk to these guys. Chris and Phil, that is. So. <laughs> All right. Just change this to heli counter. And I think all these other ones need to be heli counter as well. Yeah. And I'm okay with checking leaving this here. This is to make sure the player hasn't 
destroyed the um, trigger for the enemies. Go up here. Sweet dude. Love it, man. Yeah, it's been really rewarding to work on this game, man. Like, I can't even tell you how much, like, I'm a software engineer, and um, just working on games versus doing web software is very, very interesting. Like, people are very, very receptive to software Stop for games and one. less receptive to software for the web. Just, and it probably depends on who your audience is, but um, that works out perfectly. Probably depends on who your audience is, but um, at the same time, sometimes it's hard to find that audience. Let me try that one more time because uh, I gotta verify that I destroyed all helicopters and that the enemy still continued to come as they should have. Mission one death at dusk. Go! I guess. All right, all right, all right, all right. Good there. Won't have that bug again that I keep having. Now I'm back to where I was. <laughs> you like you like the game, Sir Tao? Um, I'm working on level two. What you're seeing me work on is level two. We do have um, uh, we do we do have level one basically in place and pretty much ready to go. There are some minor changes we're making here and there, but it's pretty good overall. Okay, so the thing I wanted to check was here. Spawn counter. Max per group. If we bring another group in. If I knew how to make games, I would make one of my favorite board games. Uh, go to PC, King of New York. So fun. Wish there was someone who made a PC version. Dude, I've never even played that gore. I don't even know if I've ever heard of it. I'll have to check it out. Alright. So I keep reading this because I'm trying to think of exactly what I could do to allow another group of enemies to come on screen at the same time and make sure that the current group that's getting generated um, gets cut off when it should. So the reason why I kept having a ton of enemies come on screen is because um, when I incremented enemy 3 group max count uh, 
at this point in time up here when this was not commented out. King of New York is so fun. I'll have to check it, man. Dang. Alright, um, any three group max count. So when I incremented this and had this not commented out, um, that basically changed the amount, the maximum amount that could be spawned to um, 16 on screen at once. And that's why they just kept getting spawned over and over again. Wish you knew how to help me, but you're a new uh, man. Everybody's got to start somewhere, bro. group counter is less than the group max count. I almost think Me dealing with this right now is going to force me to rip everything out and start all the way over on this. Uh, and I don't really want to do that. I'll leave myself here, but I have to work on my comic site. Give you a free viewer account. Tight, dude. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. And also, thanks for the follow, bro. So if we hit our max per group and decrement. picture. I'm removing it from here too. I'm not sure what benefit this is serving. check right here final check actually um, Hmm. 
other thing I'm thinking of right here is that this might need to come down here because that could help us sort out where these enemies should be coming in at. Let's see. Let's just test here. do here to continue testing this theory is pull this guy back in and pull this guy back in see if this helps test this theory This could be simply fixed by just making sure this point in time, this position point, is past Mission one, death at Huge number of units there. Quite the answer. Gonna have to keep troubleshooting that. Um, but the issue is this should definitely be getting caught. I don't know if I like the way this is happening. If we took this alarm out altogether, I could call a script instead of an alarm. Mm. And if I could call a script, then I could pass the point in time in. And what I could do for this is just have a small counter that just increments and um, comes back periodically and runs the script. So let's go look at that enemy three alarm. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's gonna be in here. I think it's gonna be in the base object. And it is. So let's go to the base object. Let's see what that value is. Fifteen uh, steps that evaluates to. I think I can still keep it there and then um, let's just have a, um, a counter helper. So we're basically just going to make our own alarm here. And this should work just fine. Let's go here. So we need to make sure that this script executes Do 
one more piece here because I basically think we need to have like one more value that activates the alarm and determines if it's been activated or not. We'll have it set to false here. So I th I'm thinking the major problem here is that this value is getting overwritten multiple times and preventing other enemies to come out in different positions at the exact same time. So we need to somehow have a snapshot of this. So about the inventory system I was talking about, basically there's one item slot and a emblem slot thing that increases your stats depending on which one you have. Should I still use what you said? So it sounds like in your game, you're only going to have one inventory item. Yeah, okay, so multiple items can go in, in that slot. Um, no, in that case I would not use a data structure map. I would just have some sort of value that's almost, it could be a global value, um, or it could be a value that's like at, um, a per, in, that's inside of a persistent object. Um, that basically sticks with you as you move throughout different rooms. Um, but all you have at that point is a, a variable that's basically global um, that has a value. And that value of that global variable can change periodically. Um, the data structure map that I was talking about comes in handy when you need multiple of those kinds of things. So if you have like two inventory slots, that's when it really comes in handy, but I would still put a data structure map like that, uh, especially if it's like a player one, I would either put it, um, I would attach it to the player because the player is probably going to be with you wherever you are, uh, the player object that is, um, and I would also attach, uh, uh, not also, but I the other option would be to attach it to a persistent object. Um, and if I had multiple items that um, could be in my inventory besides just that one, then a data structure map would be really handy because then I could just change out um, those inventory slots with those items as necessary.
Yeah, exactly. Um, so you say select global.emblem and depending on what value it is, change stats depending on the item and draw that emblem in slot. So yes, I would, uh, you're using some terms there that might be um, overlapping a little bit um, depending on how you're thinking about them. So to be clear, I would say I would have um, global.emblem maybe uh, that is set in like a create event, maybe uh, depending on what is picked up, overwritten somewhere in a step event. Um, and then um, drawn uh, later depending on um, what that value is you can draw, you know, a, a particular emblem in a particular slot. Using the, that is, using the draw event. That's what I'm thinking you're saying when you say draw. Uh, you, I, would I would be checking that value in a draw event somewhere and draw that up in the window. So, that's how I would do that. Cool, no problem. All right. Um, and and I, actually, I'm saying you would draw that, but on the other hand, you, you may not even uh, have to draw it. You could attach it to an object and place the object in a particular uh, position. So your sprite would be um, obviously part of an object, and then depending on what that value is from like your... Um, persistent object or your um, yeah from your persistent object then um, you would change out that instance that is sitting there back in life getting some promotions all right Okay, so let me think about this if my theory is correct in my head before I start writing all this code. In terms of point in time, and if I set this enemy three alarm to be activated, am I gonna be able to pass a value to it without it getting overwritten? Almost gonna need you. Uh, thanks for the follow, man. Yeah, still working on the enemy spawn stuff. Um, and uh, this is. This, this is code that I haven't touched for about a year and a half. 
And so uh, it was literally some of the first code I wrote for the game, but it was probably one of the most difficult things that I created. Um, and it was, so it was poorly written back then um, in a few areas, and I've already touched a lot of those areas up, but I'm also trying to figure out how I can make this a little bit extensible. I think I couldn't think of a way to overcome a particular problem that we had back then, and I'm thinking that I have thought of a way to do that now, so I'm trying to do that. So, what if I created an object, core code, yes, if I created an object, pass the variable into that object, set a value on that object, which would be the point in time, and then when it was ready to get destroyed, it did the instance creation, but carried that value. That could be a way to carry the point in time value. Wow, that'd be that'd be crazy if I did something like that. Is there an easier way? might be crazy. We bounce to get crazy. We do. Maybe. At least partially. Um, so what if I just kind of did this? Uh, any three E3 helper, E3H, E3 helper equals instance create XY E3, which doesn't exist yet, but then set E3H dot um, timer equal to any arg one dot enemy three alarm. And I hate to do it this way, but I'm feeling like this might be my only choice. And then let's pass a value in here, e3h dot position point equals part three. So that's really the handoff of the position point without being overwritten. If I can do that, then I can have multiple of these enemies and groups on screen at once without um, basically overwriting the position points of each other. So I gotta go create this enemy helper, that is. Sprite, I don't have a create event, and we'll drop in action here, and it'll have a timer, but initially the timer will be zero, it'll have a position point of zero, and then we're going to add a step event. I'm gonna go. Good luck. See you around. Yeah, man. Likewise. Thanks for thanks for joining us tonight, bro. Talk to you soon. All right. Um, if e3h dot timer is not equal zero. First off, let's say um, timer set equals false. Timer set equals true.
Timer set. <clears throat> and we want a counter here. Equal to timer. Then we create an instance. Uh, actually, we call the script script, and the script would be whatever's in uh, alarm two of the base enemy generator. Script enemy three. in a variable and it will be position point and that's how it's done. Then we say um, instance destroy. We have carried the object as far as it needs to go We destroy it after we've created the enemy 3 alarm with the position point. The enemy 3 alarm really a trigger but um, This way, I've passed in a value, which is position point. Position point gets called instantly instead of on a delay, which gives the script time to overwrite itself. Make sure I'm not writing anything in here that would cause anything to break because I might have thought it was available somewhere else. Am I even using this anywhere? Possibly. Might be using it. Nope. I think I'm using this. Let's check. Okay, cool. Gone. Cool. 
should be really good. Okay. So I haven't destroyed anything that I had previously, but now I can comment it out and we'll see what happens. Timer counter is here, timer, timer set is there. Man, that looks good. Let's try it. See if we have any bucks. script messed up um, with the um, destroying the, the helicopters or my script for generating the new enemies did not occur. Mission one, death at dusk, go! Aha. Here's the... Here's where original step speed is coming into play. Script in the free path. Okay, let's just add it back in. happening is I was creating too many it's almost like the time the new helper didn't destroy itself
so this is evaluating to nothing except whatever is in the script. That's not good. I guess I do have an argument being passed in. reference object. Is there a reason I need that? Let's put these in order here. So generate, spawn, Generate path. Spawn calls this. Generate. Generate calls path. Path just puts it in the correct location. Any three reference. And gives it the correct speed. Pretty much it. It's the only real thing that we're using it for in the script. We're using it for X and Y positions in could use it for there we're using it there as well Actually seems like this is enough to pass it all through based on what I see. Um, but again that timer wasn't destroying itself. Mission one, death at dusk, go! <laughs> Something wasn't ready for the Griffin hit counter. All right.
I almost feel like I know why this won't work. What's happening is I'm creating multiple of these helpers too frequently. This is happening far too frequently. I think what we could possibly do Problem, but I thought I had that. Let's try this one more time. Let's just go ahead and put it back to here, but do it that do this. Man, I guess I didn't have that set. That's all we gotta do. Let's try that.
I haven't followed my naming convention. I need to fix that. Objects. Mission one. Death at dusk. Go. sure why it failed on that. Looks like it had an art a hard time finding argument one dot enemy three alarm. Mission one death at dusk. Go copy the board, take it over the notepad. I know what the problem is. It doesn't like it doesn't like getting that when it's inside of argument with when it's inside of this uh, width block. So um, we'll just do it kind of like I had it set up initially. Just trying to think of why it would be failing right there. Try again. Hit play. That should work. Basically, when it got inside of that width block, it couldn't find argument one. Mission one, death at dusk. Go. I think I've still got a problem with my trigger. Mission one, death at dusk. Go. Right, right, that's what I was, that was uh, just my conclusion. Right. Agreed. I must still be hitting in here too many too frequently. Um, I 
because I think what's happening is I'm generating too many of these objects. And they're all dying like they should, but they're generating a bunch of... Um, when I generate a ton of them, they, each they should each generate one. But, um, yeah. If I did, I did it. Um, I guess something I could do here is also activate the alarm. I'm trying to think of what that would benefit me. That would keep this from getting generated too frequently. So let's keep this the way it is up there and just copy it down here because I always want to be able to revert if I need to and I don't necessarily want to make a commit at the moment. So let's try this. trigger the alarm so it can't run again until alarm is negative one and then it will execute this. Let's try this. Oh shoot, that's not gonna work. I wanna take out all the code right now out of alarm two before I run this. to the object base image generator. Basically we won't take it all out, we'll just comment it all out.
That should still let the alarm run as necessary to prevent running too frequently. Mission one, death at dusk, go! Boom, look at that shit. happening is well this is uh, global so that should handle it interesting Everything looks good there. Mm.
Looks like we just got another follow. Nick Shadow, thanks for the follow. Uh, also, you've just been accepted into the Griffin Aerotech School of Aci Aviation. So, welcome to the School of Aviators. Cadet, Nick Shadow 99. Just testing here. So obviously that didn't change it. And I actually think this is more accurate. I just wanted to make sure. And technically I'm not even using point in time here. I'm using argument three. And when these are called, these are called from Enemy Generator 2 in the step event. Passing position point 2 and position point 4. They're both called every step. Position point 4 is calling... Point four is calling two rows and position point two is calling one row. So that's what's currently happening. It's 
only call.